Welcome to today's FCICA product promotional webinar series. We are pleased to have Jerry Palitz from the Trax Corporation with us today to talk about their Trax Shield 100 product. And Jerry, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, Kelly. Um, well, let's see, I'll go to the first slide here. Okay, let me see if I get my slides working here. <laughs> For some reason, the slide was not moving forward. There, you oh, there go. we go. Okay, now we're good. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, welcome the FCICA members to the Trax Corporation webinar. Uh, it's featuring Trax Shield 100, a uh, rolled moisture barrier. I'm Jerry Palis. I'm the product manager here at Trax Corporate Headquarters in Pomona, California. Uh, throughout the webinar, you might have a question. Uh, and it's okay to bring up that question at that time. There's no need to wait until the end. Uh, the subject matter is pretty technical, so we don't want to lose your train of thought. Many of you attending today's webinar are familiar with Trax and our many engineered products for the flooring industry. Uh, you may have seen us at the FCICA conventions and talked to us about our products like our Cool Glide carpet seaming system, our variety of seaming tapes, our Persona cutting blades, and other products like our carpet tack strips, underlayments flooring ramps, just, just to name a few. But Trax is well known as the company who manufactures the products that maintain the infrastructure of the flooring system. And Traxial 100 also fits that bill. Today's webinar will focus on a growing problem in commercial floor installations, and that's moisture vapor damage. So you probably are already aware of the conditions that cause elevated RH, relative humidity, in the concrete, like the high fly ash concentration, uh, how the tight production schedules mandate getting onto that concrete slab soon after the 28-day pour. Uh, so th there are dynamics going on in the industry that force the flooring contractor de to deal with high relative humidity in the concrete slab. Uh, but today we're not here to talk about the problem. We're here to talk about the solution, of course. Traxial 100, uh, as we go through the presentation today, uh, we're hoping by the end of the, the presentation that you will agree with us that it, will, it is the best moisture mitigation uh, system that is under your feet. Uh, there are two main things that uh, you will walk away with that, that will be stuck in your head uh, that, that you will know going forward, and that is Traxial 100, by its name, is warranted to go to 100% RH uh, and also up the scale to pH of 14. So regardless of the, the how the serious the, the moisture vapor condition is, uh, we know that uh, Traction 100 can suppress all of the moisture vapor conditions in that slab. And high alkalinity of, uh, of 14, it, it will also suppress any kind of alkali alkaline coming up from that slab. The second thing you'll remember is that Traxial 100 is a peel and stick installation. Uh, what does that mean to you, the installer? Well, it provides a fully secured flooring system. And we'll get into the benefits of that, uh, of having uh, the peel and stick installation, uh, giving you really the, the confidence in the floor that you just put down. You may have seen this slide uh, quite, a, uh, quite a different number of places. It's uh, right off the internet. I, I certainly did not work uh, late last night doing the graphic art to, to do this. Uh, it's, it's readily off the internet. But it's a very good slide to show what is happening and why moisture mitigation is uh, required in most cases today. Uh, if you look at the very bottom of this uh, area here, this is the water table right here. Uh, this is where uh, essentially um, water is in liquid form uh, and essentially uh, in nature it, uh, it begins to create vapor and move into the soil area. So here's your soil area right here where, where it's rising as vapor as it gets up to the, to the uh, concrete slab line. Uh, this orange line here would simulate where your 15 mil polyethylene vapor retarder might go. 
and we'll talk about vapor permeance in the next slide, but essentially that uh, vapor barrier will only cut off portions of vapor that are running through that. The perm rates are very, very low, uh, and, and that it really doesn't uh, uh, prevent vapor from entering the slab. So this whole section here of your slab, uh, you'll see the water vapor uh, molecules that are very, very concentrated at the bottom, beginning to rise and rise and quickly rising through the slab and to the point where it is now uh, uh, exiting the slab and uh, creating problems then in the floor covering, which again are uh, things like uh, tile cupping um, and uh, corners that are peeling back. Uh, emulsified glue, which essentially is turning back to, to mush, um, and uh, worse situations of mold, mildew, and things of that sort. So this slide kind of gives you that uh, uh, understanding that moisture does exist in slabs. It exists in all slabs, depending on the severity, and that you may have to address that situation. Uh, this slide will essentially uh, explain that there are two different kinds of vapor retarders uh, and vapor permeance, which is the perm, uh, that a moisture barrier, all, all of them will allow a certain amount of moisture through. It's the, the manner in which uh, the amount that's, that's coming through. And unless a product out there uh, advertises them, that their, their product is tested, to the ASTM uh, E96. Uh, this right here is the test method that is the only one approved that can uh, verify that your vapor retarder uh, will be of a premium value. So the class one vapor retarder, this is the category that Track Shield is, is in. Uh, it is, uh, in order to qualify in this vapor retarder, you must be point, uh, 0.10 perms or less. Uh, and this category includes all moisture barriers installed over the concrete slab. So again, this is this is your your common moisture barrier, and it thereby protects the floor covering. Uh, these types of vapor barriers are called vapor impermeable, um, as as the name would imply, uh, allow uh, almost no vapor to to pass through. Uh, there are, there's another class, class two, vapor retarders. Their perms are 0.10 to 1.0. What this means uh, to you, the installer, is that this class, it, although it, it is the international building code, <clears throat> it is the building code for categories that include the vapor retarders that are installed over the soil and under the concrete slab. So if you remember our diagram, there, this is essentially the 15 mil polyethylene, and these are defined as vapor semi impermeable. And once again, by its name, uh, you can see that uh, vapor does pass through at a much greater rate. So, uh, when selecting a moisture barrier to protect your floor covering, you have to be sure that they advertise themselves as 0.10 perms or less. Now you know that you may have, uh, uh, you know that you have moisture in the slab. The issue here is, is when do you mitigate? When, when are the conditions to mitigate that slab? The very first one would be if you're dealing with a new concrete slab. Uh, it's poured and at 28 days, it uh, essentially will have uh, the um, um, uh, conditions where the liquid moisture has evaporated from the slab itself, uh, yet that slab is now at about 100% RH. And it will take several weeks before that slab will start to fall into the 99 to 98% RH value. Uh, with Traxial 100, you can go right over that slab at 28 days. Uh, as long as the liquid moisture is now gone, uh, you can cover that slab, and if you're under a very tight production schedule, uh, it will uh, essentially allow you to get onto that slab right away, keep that slab hydrated at high RH levels, but protect it from any, any of the under that vapor from rising. When else would you mitigate? 
when your RH probe readings, like your Wagner's uh, uh, reading of 80% or higher, uh, that kind of RH level will typically emulsify most flooring adhesives. Certainly some of your cheaper ones, like your clear or thin spreads. Uh, obviously the adhesive industry is working on having uh, certain uh, adhesives that uh, can withstand upwards of 90%. Uh, so they're doing some work there. But in most cases, if you've got 80% or greater, you will have to make a decision to mitigate. Where else would you mitigate? Is on old slabs with no vapor barrier that's under that slab. Uh, they will have very great variations in RH readings. Uh, you might find a 99% in one corner and a 78% in the other corner. Uh, you have uh, very, very irregular absorption and porosity of these very old slabs. And when else would you mitigate? Obviously, when it's too late. Uh, at that point, uh, it could be a floor you've installed or someone else has installed, but you'll see alkalinity coming up from the, uh, the uh, tile seams. Tiles will be popping and cupping, uh, and mold and mildew could very well be uh, starting uh, under that continued uh, moisture area. So now that you know you must mitigate, here are the options to mitigate. Uh, most of you are familiar with shot blasting and two-part epoxy. Uh, I would define this as kind of the old school way of uh, doing the job. Uh, the tenant essentially will pay two to three times the cost of Track Shield 100 um, in performing this function. And the production schedule grows by several days. Uh, obviously, you need the first day to come bring your crew in to do the shot blasting. Uh, they recommend about a 24-hour gassing off period after that. Then you have to come in, of course, and lay your two-part epoxy and uh, let that cure for a day or two uh, before you're basically ready then to come in and, uh, and put your flooring down. One thing to be concerned about uh, in this particular method is that the air becomes contaminated with silicon dust. Uh, and also there is a VOC emission uh, in the two-part epoxy. There are new OSHA regulations coming out on silica dust. Uh, these regulations are starting in June, which is just a couple of months away. So you just need to be concerned about the, the, the new regulation on emission uh, of silica dust that is around the corner, and that uh, there are options to mitigate that will uh, allow you to get in quickly and not have to deal with this particular issue. Uh, another option to mitigate would be the 95, I'll call it the 95% system. Uh, some of those are roll down. Uh, they are essentially one coat system. Some are uh, in, in a rolled form, uh, in, a, in a membrane form. One of the things that you would have to consider as an installer is why use a 95% RH system. Um, today's Thursday. Uh, it is April. It is springtime. Uh, in some parts of the country, the snow is still thawing, the ground is saturated, and spring rains are coming. You could be taking an RH test today uh, on Thursday, uh, and your readings might be 94, 95 percent. Uh, but by the time you are, the floor may not be going down for another 7 to 10 days. And there could be heavy rains coming. Uh, there could be uh, situations developing where that saturated ground uh, will uh, raise that slab RH is up to the, the possibly 98%. So why take the risk? Why take the risk of that situation there? Uh, what we want to tell you today is that Track Shield 100 would be that best option for you. Uh, it gives you the 100% RH protection every day and at the lowest cost per square foot. You will find that, that uh, Tractual 100 will essentially be the lowest cost means uh, for 100% protection available in the industry. Here's a slide that just essentially is uh, just a backup. Uh, so it, this is again off the internet. 
essentially to talk about the OSHA regulation on silica, crystalline silica dust. Uh, and this is real. It's happening in June. And if you are involved in beaten blast, uh, you'll have to be uh, going through some additional uh, situations to reduce emissions. Trying to move the slide. There we go. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Tractual 100 now that uh, a lot of the background information has been given to you. Uh, Tractual 100 in, in its uh, uh, when when peel, in the peel and stick form, it protects virtually all types of floor coverings, uh, whether it's the VCTs, the, all the vinyls, LVPs, and static dissipated tiles. Uh, certainly, you can apply any of those uh, uh, over the top of Tractual 100. Uh, your carpet products, uh, carpet tile and broad loom products can be applied. And also one thing that uh, makes it, uh, again, a little bit more unique is that commercial grade sheet vinyls can be applied uh, with Tractual. Because you are peel and stick, because you are fully integrated into the floor itself, uh, those are uh, required essentially when you're putting down a sheet vinyl product. Uh, we'll talk a little bit further in, in the next couple of slides also about Tractual 100 being approved for ceramic tile. Uh, it is an anti-fracture membrane as well. So you will see that, uh, that uh, ceramic tile, if you're doing a particular job where there's ceramic tile in the bathroom and LVP going through the field of a possibly a restaurant, uh, one moisture barrier for one job, uh, it, uh, it uh, gives you that uh, opportunity. And then again, other uh, other wood products can be applied over the top. And of course, one of the most important things that you can have in a product is the warranty. And Tractual 100 does have a full 10-year warranty uh, protecting against moisture vapor uh, damages that, 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 that could certainly occur. Uh, here's an ad uh, that we are um, Promoting uh, throughout the industry, you may have seen it in an FCICA publication or other uh, professional uh, publication, and uh, it kind of uh, reiterates uh, the uh, acceptability of the product across a broad range of floor coverings. So let's talk about the peel of peel and stick method and how it is a very large benefit to you, the installer, to, to your confidence level uh, and to the end result uh, and the job that you perform. Obviously with peel and stick, uh, you uh, adhere to the concrete slab. Uh, that gives you that, that fully integrated system. This will help secure the floor uh, with respect to rolling loads so that if you do, let's say you're doing, uh, maybe you're doing assisted living facility and there's wheelchairs that will be going across the floor, there could be gurneys, uh, hospital beds in the medical field, areas that you know that you have rolling load issues. Uh, it's very, very important uh, for that secured flooring system to control uh, uh, the potential effects of rolling loads. As peel and stick, uh, it is a floor that is installed in hours, not in days. Uh, you could start your job in the morning, you put the primer down, uh, you let that cure, and then you install your track shield uh, in that same morning. Uh, and by the time the afternoon comes, you are ready to install your, your finished floor. So in some jobs, that job will, will be done that same day as opposed to, again, some of the other methods that are available to you. We mentioned again the peel and stick will make it possible for commercial sheet vinyl to be installed. Uh, so that there's no void in that, uh, in that uh, flooring system. It will be smooth and ready to go. Tractual 100 is quick to install. There's no curing time. Uh, once you peel and stick to the concrete itself, uh, it is ready to receive your adhesive for your floor covering. Uh, so there's no waiting time with respect to Tractual 100. 
and as an installer, you know that you're always responsible to, to make sure your seams don't telegraph through. Uh, Traxial 100, when uh, for vinyls, if you do a proper double cut uh, of uh, Traxial 100, uh, our seaming system is installed on the bottom of the seam, uh, so that as you then put your vinyls down, there is zero telegraphing of the seam itself. Uh, in methods where you're dealing with carpet, uh, carpet tile products, you can just lightly butt the seam and, and go from there. And, it's, and there are certain occasions that the client may want to see a loose lay. Uh, maybe it's a retailer that changes the floors out every three years, and they want to be able to rip it out. Um, or it could be other special situations that the slabs uh, have certain conditions that you want to loose lay. Uh, yes, we just leave the peelable liner, the nylon liner on track shield, and you can proceed to do a loose lay for those special situations. I talked earlier about uh, anti-fracture uh, and that uh, track shield is an anti-fracture membrane as well. It does uh, bridge horizontal cracks that could occur in a slab movement and it will bridge those cracks all the way to 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, track shield 100 has been tested by the TCNA uh, for ceramic tile installation and it has passed with very, very strong grading. Um, the, the Robinson floor test is a very important part of approving a membrane uh, for ceramic tile. And the uh, Traxial 100 has been tested with an extra heavy rating, which means that it's essentially uh, went to the end of the cycle uh, on the Robinson floor test, which uh, is very impressive. There's a secondary test called the crack resistant test. And it's the ANSI A118.12. Uh, that's uh, for the slab itself. And uh, Traxial 100, when applied on a brand new slab, will give you a crack resistance at a, what's called a high performance rating, according to TCNA, which again performs that test uh, under ANSI regulations. So essentially, it does protect the concrete slab from major cracking when applied over a brand new uh, slab floor. One of the other uh, benefits of Traxial 100 is the fact that with its rubberized copolymer center that uh, you will get acoustical properties from this. Now, you as the uh, installer uh, may not be making this decision, but it might be made by uh, the uh, architects that are approving a project. And uh, one of the things that we have in our in our specification sheet that that uh, is also a handout for you at the end of this is the fact that uh, we do have these acoustical property ratings in it uh, for sound transmission, which is called STC, which is like your voice or your television set and how it might pass from one floor into another, uh, track shield has a rating of 53. Uh, for impact, which is your walking on the floor, dropping a glass, things of that sort, the impact rating is the 52 uh, uh, dB rating. And uh, what's important for the architect is delta, which means that what is, what is this flooring system going to be like with track shield and the floor covering versus just a concrete slab. And that number, which uh, is uh, 21 for track shield, uh, makes it, uh, it puts it into this um, acoustic barrier classification. Uh, you require those, these types of readings uh, to actually surpass the uniform building code, which uh, is 50-50 minimum. And uh, as, as you meet those requirements, you are then qualify as an acoustic barrier. And of course, this is great for multi-story buildings. Um, and I'll show you an example or two of that uh, coming up real shortly here.
we talked a lot about uh, the what and why and when you would mitigate, and we talked a lot about the track shield benefits uh, to the to the installation itself. But there are many benefits to you, the installer, and also in, a, in another way to the tenant itself. When you're installing Track Shield 100, there is when you're cutting and taping and such, there is no dust created. There is no silica dust. There is no, there is no other dust that's created in the process. There are no fumes that are involved uh, versus the fumes that you would be involved with when you're doing epoxy type of the work. And there are no VOCs uh, in a volatile organic compound. Uh, you may not notice it, you're, but you know in the building trade yourself that, that you are exposed to certain products and uh, and and inhalants that could affect you um, uh, as an installer. So you want to be sure that you're working with products that are safe for you, that that uh, you can deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, one of the other benefits. This is more a benefit, though, for the installer. I should say for the tenant which is no mold or fungus growth. Uh, there is an ASTM test that we have uh, taken and passed, which shows that there is no food source uh, within uh, uh, Traction 100 that mold and fungus will, will feed on. And another benefit, which is kind of uh, an important benefit to you, the installer, is that as Traction 100 guarantees 100% RH protection, you really don't need to do or perform the RH test. You can literally eyeball a slab, look for standing or glistening water, and if it doesn't appear that there, that there is anything to that extent, you can go ahead and proceed to install Traxial 100. And naturally, some jobs that are larger, uh, the general contractor will certainly mandate that RH tests are done, and they, they typically will need to do that. But sometimes on a smaller job, uh, just by eyeballing it, you can determine that that uh, you can proceed uh, in putting track shield 100 down. So again, what we're trying to tell you is when you're making a decision on moisture mitigation, it's one product that does it all. It's track shield 100. You don't have to think about uh, products that might mitigate to 90%, 95% or such. Uh, one product will get, it, get the job done for you, and, it be, and what you'll find is that it will become your go-to. It will become your new technology. Uh, for installing moisture mitigation. I'm going to show you four examples of some uh, larger scale jobs that were done uh, so you can understand why the decision was made to go with Traction 100. This uh, first slide will show you the University of Colorado. Uh, they had proceeded to uh, Wanted to build four new school dorms. This was done last summer uh, for a total of 75,000 square feet. Uh, the things that were that were so important in this particular uh, build out was that the production schedule was extremely tight. They had the summer to get the buildings fully constructed while the kids were gone and have them ready to go by the time the kids came back to, to school. So their key uh, situation is they were pouring slabs uh, throughout uh, the building, and crack suppression was going to be a key component for them because they, they had to get onto those slabs uh, really very, very close to the 28-day mark. So Track Shield 100 with its qualities for crack suppression uh, filled that need. Those slabs are obviously at that rate uh, have a very high RH level. Uh, they're at you know 98 to 100 percent RH at that time, so moisture suppression, of course, is extremely important. While those slabs are slowly gassing off, and of course, then the acoustical rating, which was uh, chosen by the uh, architect in this particular case, because you're dealing with dorm rooms and acoustical requirements uh, that uh, go into the, the building of dorm dormitory rooms. So th this was a perfect installation for Track Shield 100, and it performed exactly to the game plan. The, this uh, 
Uh, next installation is a GAP outlet store. Uh, what the GAP had here was a 12,000 square foot store. They were getting RH levels at 98% throughout many parts of the store. And their goal here was to move from what was a, a, a polished concrete floor that was originally chosen because this was an outlet store. They wanted to say that, hey, for GAP products, you can buy them cheaper here. Uh, but that uh, strategy, apparently, uh, to management was not exactly what uh, was, was achieving their goal. So they wanted to go in and build out a nice-looking Amsico LVP floor. Uh, this happens to be day number one, uh, where the store was closed at 9 o'clock at night. Uh, the team came in, installed the track shield, as you can see it here, uh, over the slab, and laid the first 3,000 feet uh, of Antico that very first night. The clothing racks then came back into place, and by the morning when the store opened up, so they continued to operate in business. But you can take a look and see, see the, the um, uh, light reflection here. That This, this uh, floor is smooth as glass. The job was done in four nights, and the store never closed. Here's Pomona Valley Hospital. Uh, Pomona Valley Hospital is uh, uh, an older institution here in, in the, uh, the city of Pomona. Uh, they had a lot of flooring that uh, needed uh, replacement. They actually had some mold growth uh, prior in some of these floors. So they knew they had an issue. Uh, they, they decided, of course, to go with a premium floor, the Mannington BioSheet product, to make sure that, they're, of course, they're dealing in a highly hygienic environment. Their RHs were at 94%, so they knew they had moisture issues that had to be dealt with. Uh, and, of course, that was creating the mold that, that, they, that they had. So uh, in the decision-making of going with Track Shield 100, mold-resistant, resistance was a key component for them uh, that uh, going down the line for for the warranty period they knew that there was going to be no moisture damage there was going to be no mold growth uh, also in an operating hospital a key component here again is don't create fumes don't create dust we are dealing with a hospital with patients and this was extremely important with no fumes no dust and, of course, that hidden thing called the VOC, which goes into the air, uh, there was no VOC emission whatsoever. Uh, Pomona Valley Hospital has permanently written Traction 100 into their specification and are doing the next big job in the facility. Here's a, an example of uh, how it's being used at very, very high-end uh, establishments. This happens to be a company in the California aerospace industry who wants to be kept unknown uh, with respect to the work that they're doing. This is a laboratory. It, it again, is a highly hygienic area because they calibrate very uh, expensive aerospace uh, electronics in this room. The tiles here in the foreground are electrostatic tiles uh, where, that are heat welded. So you can heat weld uh, over track shield. Uh, in the background, uh, you can see the track shield has been installed with an Ardex skin coat over the top. And essentially, this is to uh, enhance the, the bond of the, this very special graphite adhesive that, is, uh, that holds the, the electrostatic tile down. Uh, it responds extremely well to this uh, cementitious layer. So that uh, the, an Ardex or an equivalent Ardex product is sometimes recommended to apply over track shield for the, some of these very high-end uh, uh, floor coverings and also for sheet vinyl products. So these are four uh, uh, case studies, I guess I can call them, uh, to show you the, the, the versatility of track shield 100 why it's picked and where it's picked, why that happens. 
uh, and that uh, you can see that it can be used in, in virtually any kind of a flooring environment. So to summarize uh, features and benefits, I think I, I had mentioned the first, the first things that you're going to remember are this is a Traxial 100 in its name is a 100% relative humidity protector and a 14 pH protector. Uh, it is peel and stick, many, many benefits of peel and stick. All types of commercial floor coverings, including sheet vinyl, can be applied with track shield. Uh, crack suppression for when you're doing new slabs, acoustical properties for when multi-story requires them, and for you, the installer, the eco-friendliness of the, in the installation, uh, that uh, you're not dealing with anything that's going to be harmful. And all this for a 10-year warranty. You can stand behind your work uh, and, stand and build your integrity as a flooring installer uh, by promoting products that are going to give you a long-term warranty. So uh, as I've been explaining, uh, I'm hoping that uh, through this presentation today that we would convince you that Traxial 100 is the highest performing and lowest cost moisture mitigation system. Um, and um, certainly the handouts that we have that are adjoining this um, will be something you can take back with you to read over and to understand uh, that uh, it, it's really going to be your go-to moisture mitigation system uh, looking forward. So at this point, I don't know if there are any other questions to, to be answered. Uh, again, I'm Jerry Palis. Uh, there's my email address, uh, my phone number here at Trax Corporation. Uh, and if there are any questions right now, certainly I'd be willing to do that, or they can come at, at certainly at a later date. Okay, Jerry, we, we do have a few questions for you. Um, and as we're going through the questions, please go ahead and submit um, your questions. Um, we'll be happy to uh, get those over to um, have Jerry answer them today. And as he said, if you have questions moving forward, you have his contact information and you can, you can contact him directly. Jerry, your first question, um, let's see, in hospitals, what about hill rom beds denting the floor? Yes, we have done testing on uh, the hill rom testing. There is a special ASTM for that type of rolling load. Um, here's uh, <clears throat> one of the things that uh, uh, the floor covering industry uh, has done. They have all tested their products uh, to the hill rom requirement. Um, and most of the floor coverings that go into the, the medical area have extremely high PSI, of course, to, to be able to withstand the rolling load. Uh, so most of the floor coverings you'll see are 1,000 PSI, 1,200 PSI, even up to 1,500 PSI, uh, which is a tremendous amount of uh, force that can be with, withstood uh, in, in the medical area. Uh, track shield uh, in our test does not add to any type of uh, uh, indentation issue. Uh, it's, it's truly up to the, the floor covering itself to do the initial um, uh, PSI uh, resistance. Um, so the, the tests that we have have indicated that it does not add to, to any type of indentation. Okay, great. Uh, next question. Um, I'm sorry, did you have more to add to that one? No, that's it. That's it. All right, next question then. Uh, when do you use double-sided tape? Okay, double-sided tape can be used uh, in a couple of different areas. Uh, sometimes if you're, you are at the threshold area uh, and you want to make sure that because of the amount of traffic in that area that you might want to use the double-sided tape to seal down uh, the track shield at the, uh, uh, at, in, that, in that particular location. Uh, many times we use the double-sided tape also uh, in commercial sheet vinyl installations, uh, again, because of the um, uh, requir just the, the installation requirements uh, in, in the sheet vinyl. Uh, so many times we will, we will use a double-sided tape in those areas. But for the most part, we have a single-sided seam tape that, again, is applied under the seam 
that the track shield will bond to the surface of that uh, seam tape. Uh, the seam tape, of course, bonding to the primed concrete, uh, and that is more than 90% of our installation. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question, Jerry. Again, if you have a question, please go ahead and, and type it there in that question uh, pane and send it over to us and we'll get it answered for you. Your next question is, uh, let's see, why can you not use tape on top after double cut? Uh, well, again, you don't want to uh, telegraph a seam. So uh, even though the seam tape itself is very thin, it's, it's, uh, it's about uh, tw uh, 20, um, I'm sorry, 20 mils, uh, it, it, it may telegraph. So the, the uh, responsibility of the installer is to make sure those seams are hidden. Uh, we've designed track shields so that the tape would apply under that seam line so that you don't have to worry about that. Uh, it, if you do apply it on the top surface, you would then have to probably feather finish that seam line to hide it. So uh, that would, you know, bring forward a, a new step of installation, uh, which I don't think you need to do. Now, again, if you're do, if you're doing carpet tile, uh, that might be a different scenario. Okay, thanks. Uh, next question. Um, what needs to be done to prep the concrete slab before installing the product? Right, uh, Track Shield 100 is not going to hide or mask any major imperfections. So it's required that the concrete slab is smooth and level uh, so that any of these imperfections do not telegraph through the finished flooring. So we, we mandate that you patch all the cracks and joints which are an eighth of an inch or greater. Um, and we recommend a high quality patch a compound which is uh, kind of a high moisture application compound let's you know I'll just use the name of uh, uh, MRP moisture resistant patch I think there's a product out there that uh, many installers are familiar with uh, so we just want to make sure that that that, that uh, slab is smooth and level and ready to go okay thanks uh, next question how much square footage does each row accommodate? Okay, each row uh, is uh, uh, configured to go 200 square feet. It's uh, three feet wide by 66.6 .6 feet long. Uh, so when doing calculations for a room, it's 200 square feet per row. It weighs about 50 to 52 pounds, so it's light enough that one man can carry a roll uh, without uh, you know, requiring uh, special accommodation of two people carrying a roll. Okay, and we have one last question here before we wrap up. Jerry, again, if you have another question while we're answering this one, please submit it. Um, how long must you acclimate the Trek uh, Shield 100 rolls to the room? Okay, uh, acclimation certainly is important for all floor covering. Uh, if you read the installation instructions for most all floor coverings, they will ask for at least 48 hours, sometimes 72 hours of acclimation into a room that's HVAC controlled uh, at 65 degrees minimum. Uh, and it's not much different for track shield. We only require 24 hour acclimation uh, in a room that again is, is HVAC controlled, 60, uh, 65 degree minimum. Uh, then you will have successful installation uh, of track shield and the floor coverings. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's uh, all the questions we have for today. Um, we're going to wrap up our session. We'd like to thank Trax Corporation for sponsoring today's webinar and especially thank Jerry Palis for presenting it. Thank you, Jerry, very much for all the great information. Um, my pleasure. If you'd like, go ahead. No, it's my pleasure. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, if you'd like more information about the Trax product line, you can visit their website. It's traxcorp.com. And just a reminder that the recording of this session will be available on the FCICA website and YouTube channel where you can access it any time. And those handouts will be sent to you following our session. And Jerry's contact information is contained in those slides. So go ahead and take a look at that. If you're interested in participating in the FCICA promotional webinar series, you can contact me by email, kelly at fcica.com. 
and we're going to go ahead and close our session. Thanks so much for joining us, and um, everyone have a great day. Thank you again.